Welcome to another VMAX Scart video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to assemble the DIY supercharger kit for your A Series Mini or Minor. So, this is uh, an outline of what parts come with it. Uh, your kit may differ to this different size pulleys or decompression plates to suit 1300 or 998 engines are provided. Uh, when you order it to make sure you've got the right kit for your engine uh, There's some stainless steel tubes here and stainless steel laser cut plates to make the manifold up and then the inlet flange for the DCOE carb is an aluminium uh, Plate that's laser cut Let's get started So First things first, let's start putting the manifold together. So it's two pieces that are laser cut. Um, first thing you need to do is make sure that they are straight along the top. They haven't been damaged at all or distorted in shipping. Um, because this part, because it's quite thin across here, can bend this way or this way in shipping. So just make sure you run a straight edge across here to make sure it's straight and across this flat face here to make sure it's uh, straight and flat before we weld it together. I'm going to be TIG welding this together, uh, but you can use MIG weld um, or you can get, if you haven't got the facilities to do it yourself, you can get someone else to do it for you. So this is tacked in place. So what we can see here is we've got a two millimeter uh, step from the manifold plate to the inlet plate two millimetres from being flush across here and one, uh, sorry, half a millimetre step down here. This is just tacked in place. Also, it's an 88 degree angle across here, not 90. Best thing to do is just tack in place and line things up. Just do a little bit at a time to stop heat distortion and any movement of plates as you're welding. This section will actually be removed afterwards to give clearance for the exhaust, but when you're welding it together, it's good for keeping the distances correct and the alignment. It's important not to do too much welding in any one time. So this is welded and it's allowed to cool down in between. So I've just put some fillet welds on the inside and then welded across the top to hold the plate on. Next, we're looking at cutting the port sections, so these stainless tubes. So we're going to cut an angle across here. So to cut this piece of tube, I've mounted it in a vise, and then I'm just going to use a hacksaw to cut through on a downward angle. But also I need to lean it slightly this way because I want a slightly shallower angle across it. I'll show you that in a minute. So this is cut with the hacksaw. You can see that it's cut at a slight angle. Uh, you can cut it shorter than it needs to be and then sand it with a disc sander to get the right kind of angle. What we're looking for is a join from this port to the inlet port there. Next step is we're gonna cut about 50 mil off the end of this, off one of the tails. It's equal length, so it doesn't matter which end. So you end up with a piece of straight pipe, and we're going to weld that onto that piece. So this is now welded. We're going to insert that into this port and line it up and weld it. So again, just uh, tack in place until you're happy with it. You can see there's a slight misalignment in that the pipe comes across at an angle. You can uh, use some carbide burrs and just take off edges if there's any um, flash from the laser cutting, just to let it sit in that position. That's just tacked in place. 
and what we've got is a small lip of the pipe just there. So I'm just going to weld that around that section there. So that's tacked there. Next job to do is just drift this out on these edges so that the tube lines up with the hole. So you can see on this side I've just drifted the tube out and then welded it. So that's welded around the tube. Uh, next thing to do is just weld on the inside around this short side radius. So I've welded around the inside of the tube and then I've just run the TIG torch around this edge just to radius it. You can do that with a carbide cutter or uh, just use a TIG torch like I do. So next is... So next stage is the second port. Uh, so cut the piece of tube but more of a 90 degree angle. And then with the tail that you've cut off, uh, you should be nearly in the right ballpark. Might need to sand it down a little bit to fit this port on. So I'm just going to start welding that together. So I've just tacked that in place here. And obviously I've welded it around there. I'm going to go ahead and weld that. And I'll show you what to do with the manifold face. So that's that pipe welded up. I've welded up around the outside where it's easy to get to and then on the inside where it's more difficult where the two pipes are running really close. Next we're just going to cut these off, these ex extra bits of tube and weld around the flange. Before we do this we want to make sure that that's completely flat so check it with a straight edge uh, before you do anything about cutting and welding these sections. So that's cut and welded. Uh, last sort of stage here is we're going to cut this bar out with a hacksaw because we don't need that anymore and just run a belt sander across the face. So that is the manifold finished. Uh, just put a couple of little tacks on here just for extra stability and then just go around and just take off the edges uh, where there's any sharp edges from machining or laser cutting. Next part is the supercharger. So this is used on mainly Mercedes cars, um, an A271, Eaton, uh, also known as an M45, M65, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take it apart. Um, you want to find one without any damage on the rotors in case anything has gone through it, any particles. If it's got oil inside it, that's not usually too much of a problem uh, because it generally protects everything. Um, and we just want to work on this end case to weld the uh, Weber or DCOE flange onto it. So once you have removed all the bolts around the front, you can pull the rotor pack and the nose casing off. Uh, there's oil in there, so it'll make a bit of a mess and just clean and inspect everything. Um, so this has got a couple of bearings which are sealed down the bottom with um, oil seals that are high temperature Viton. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to cut it just before this rib. So I'm just going to use a hacksaw, cut that in a vise. So that's cut off. This is the piece that you don't need. Um, what I've done is just squared that off in the mill. So you can see that's how it went together just so we've got a flat uh, face to weld to. 
So I'm going to just clean that up around where I need to weld. Uh, this is the flange that we're welding on. So we're just going to deburr it and tap these M8. So that's now cleaned up, ready for welding. So, and that's obviously tapped and deburred, M8 taps to hold the carbon. Uh, so you need to be careful when you're welding this. Um, you can change the bearings or you can uh, just do a tiny bit of welding and then dip it in water to stop everything getting too hot. Um, because this is uh, for the DIY um, kit, I'm not gonna change those bearings. I'm gonna try and do it with those in there because that might be out of reach to people doing this as a DIY project. Um, you can get a little bit more bonnet clearance if you take a couple of mil off this, this face, this mounting face. Um, the other thing that you need to do is have a 14 mil gap here. So it's offset. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill weld in small amounts and then reshape it afterwards. So let's go on to welding. Again, it's not about how the weld looks, it's making sure that we don't distort this case so the rotors still fit in and the bearings aren't distorted or, or they've got too hot. So it's just small amounts of weld, cooling it down and then doing a bit more. So, important to note here is there's no discolor discoloration of the bearings. Like I said, it doesn't matter if the welding looks messy what we're trying to do is do small amounts of weld without creating distortion to the case. Uh, this is not the way I make the supercharger kits. I do different things to them. The ones that I sell as a complete kit. Again, this is as a DIY um, conversion. I'm showing you how you can do it. Okay, everyone doesn't have the money to buy a kit. So this is a way to do it. Uh, for less money. Okay, this is cleaned up. Um, what we're trying to do is just make a, a triangular shaped port there and smooth this out as best as possible. If you need to go back and do a bit more welding, that's not a problem. Uh, just make sure again, no heat marks on the bearings. Well, the other side up. Okay, so that's welded and ported. Let's go around the bearing bosses. Because it's false induction, the fact that it's not a direct port makes very little difference. Uh, there's a lot more vacuum through this section than there would be with a carburetor uh, on an engine without a supercharger a supercharger is like a vacuum pump and also a pressure pump so it's sucking much more vacuum through the carburetor uh, than you would get otherwise uh, again point to note uh, there's no heat distortion or heat marks on the bearings that's about it for this part uh, next part I'm going to show you how to finish off some more sections on the supercharger and assembling it ready for use. Thanks for watching.